Hello, my name is Christopher Fagnelli, and this is the last video of the Machinery Tools Extension Series. So the previous video, we just added bearings to our bodies and we viewed animation to make sure everything's connected correctly. Now what we want to do is add some gears to this. In our model and NT browser, if we go to the Machinery Tools and enter in the gears folder, we can see there are two different types of gears that we can use, the helical gear set and the planetary gear set. We'll be just using the helical gear set for this video. So if we select helical gear set, we can create our gears. So kind of like with the bearings, we have to choose our first two bodies. So I'm gonna do shaft two and the input shaft. Then I'm gonna use the markers to define the positioning of the gears. So the input to shaft two, gear two, and then the input to shaft two, gear one. This is different compared to the bearings since for the second body it was the housing which is grounded which we could have just used the global reference frame. This one we had to use a second marker placed on the second body. Once that's all done I can hit create and now I can input some parameters. Viewing the table on the screen I can input the parameters in. We can also see that the widths of both gears are already parameterized to an equation. This is just in case you don't have the width, but if you do, you can enter it in. Now I'm going to follow the same procedure and make the last two gear sets. Now to do a quick top view just to make sure they are aligned correctly and everything looks good. Everything looks good to me. I'm going to exit out of the tool and I'm going to quickly rename all the gear sets. Once that's complete, I'm going to look over the geometry properties. I can see that there are predefined equations defining number of gear per teeth. There is also a few coefficients that are defaulted. These are just based on documentation, average values. We can also see that there's a profile shift coefficient that's also defined by equation, as well as the operating center distance. Going over to modeling, we can view the connection type per gear. By default, they are fixed to the shafts. You can change them to a revolute joint if you like. By default, also the gears have contact properties enabled. You can also apply Coulomb friction as well as the mesh properties, how the gears are going to be meshed. We can also give our own user-defined material. We had to input some density. We can export the graphic and parameters. I'm gonna leave those as default. I'm just gonna go through the rest of them just to make sure they're all good. Everything looks good. Now's a great time to save the model. Now what we want to do is run the model. This will take some time to run. I will resume the video once simulation is complete. All right, simulation is complete. Now let's animate the results. If I hit play and process steps, I can view the animation and now we can see the user-defined force graphics. To disable those force graphics, what you can do is type in force in the search bar and you can see the user-defined force graphics. You can deactivate them if need be. What we can also do is plot the results. Instead of hitting animate, we hit plot. With hypergraph loaded up, I can view the marker forces and any expressions. I'm just going to pick a few of the reaction forces and I am going to plot the X component. That completes the video series on learning how to use the machinery tools extension. Thank you and have a good day.